So we will begin with the names of Allah session, inshallah. Does anyone remember what name we covered yesterday? I haven't turned on the screen yet. It was not a rub. Okay, so yesterday we covered the name Al Abim, which means the most great. And today we will inshallah be covering Al Afu, which means the pardoner. Um, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So the name Al Afu in the Quran, an example of where this appears is Surah is um Surah chapter number twenty two, verse number sixty. And we see it says that that is so and whoever responds to injustice with the equivalent of that with which he had which with which he was harmed and then is tyrannized allah will surely aid him indeed allah is pardoning and forgiving and in the quran we see many examples of where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he is the partner he is the forgiving he is the most forgiving and that allah sub we see in the quran as well that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he forgives all sins if the if the believer is sincerely repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is all part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy because nobody else is as merciful as Allah and nobody else has this patience that Allah has. For example, if somebody was to, for example, murder someone of our own family or murder someone that's close to you, you wouldn't be able to forgive them. It would be very, very difficult to forgive them. And that would be a very rare situation because as humans, we naturally, we naturally have grudges against those who do wrong to us. So if someone does something as big as as big as that, that's a very huge crime and it's very wrong. So if someone does something like that to us, it, it wouldn't be easy to forgive someone like that. But if that person does sincere repentance to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that they are doing sincere repentance, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive that person, inshallah. And so over here, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all merciful, the all forgiving, and he is the pardoner. Because whenever we repent to Allah or turn to Allah sincerely and ask Allah for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does forgive us. Alhamdulillah. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who forgives, pardons, and covers the sins. In this world, when we tell somebody else about our sin, you can't trust anyone because they might go on and say that, I'm not going to tell anyone, but they might go on and spread, spread your sin and spread what you told them to other people. Because we know that there are many hypocrites, people are double-faced. So if you tell somebody a sin that you have committed, something that you have done that was wrong, that word is going to spread really quickly. Because as humans, we love, many humans love gossip or love talking about each other, which is, it's not a good, it's not a good quality. It's a very bad quality and it's something we should try to abstain from as much as we can. But people do, it's, it's the reality. People do do that. As humans, we do that. And but the thing is that when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows your sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knows all that you're doing. He knows all your sins, what you do in private, what you do in public. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going around telling people what you're doing. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is covering your sins and your sins are kept between you and Allah. That's it. And even when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance, and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. Allah keeps those sins between you and Allah. That's that's it. Sins are kept private. And when you ask for repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if, if you are sincere in your repentance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah forgive you. And this quality is indicative of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Like I mentioned earlier, Allah is the most merciful and the fact that he forgives us and pardons us when we are sincere in our repentance, that shows how merciful Allah is. Because if Allah could choose to maybe not forgive us, but instead Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is choosing to forgive us. And that shows us that Allah is very merciful to us. Because in this world as humans, 
we have a choice to forgive someone or to not forgive someone. If someone does wrong to us, a lot of times we have the urge to not forgive them, to not accept their sorries or their they're ask for when they ask us for forgiveness many times we hold grudges and we say no like we don't we don't usually forgive people but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over here because allah is the most merciful allah does forgive us so now how can we apply this in our daily lives because we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiving is the pardoner and we see this in the quran this shows us that we should always turn to allah in sincere repentance even if we for example if we do something wrong we have we're scared that someone may not forgive us, but we should always be hopeful whenever we turn to Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive us because Allah does say this in the Quran that He is the pardoner, He is the most forgiving. So when you do turn to Allah, Allah will forgive you, inshallah. And that's not the same case with humans all the time. We make mistakes, we go to other people and ask for forgiveness, and many times we don't get that, the fact we don't get their forgiveness. And that can be very, that can be a bad situation for you you're going to feel regretful and remorse. But with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you are sincere, Allah does forgive you and you should always be hopeful about this because you should never have a negative feeling towards your Lord that maybe Allah is not going to forgive me. You know, that's, that's, that's the wrong attitude. You should always be hopeful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you, inshallah. If you, are, if you are sincere, Allah should forgive you, right? But the same situation isn't with humans. And we see that, it's impossible to be per- it's impossible to be perfect <clears throat> but despite our constant shortcomings and sins allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the merciful and he pardons those among us who are sincere and repentant another action point we can take from this is that we should practice forgiveness among ourselves as well so as humans as i mentioned earlier we're not that good at forgiving others because we do hold grudges and that's normal that's natural as humans we have grudges but we also regret our actions as well and to come to a conclusion between all of this it's best if all of us try to practice forgiveness in our lives if someone does us wrong we should try to forgive them because when you forgive others allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you okay so now we will move on to our supplication section and we see that in a hadith in jamia al-thirmidhi aisha radiallahu anha narrated that i said "O messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what is your view if I know when the night of Al-Qadr is? Then what should I say in it? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Say, O oh Allah, indeed you are pardoning, generous. You love to pardon, so pardon me. <clears throat> and this dua in Arabic is, Allahumma innaka afuwun kareemun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. And we see that this is the dua that we recite or we abundantly recite in the last 10, uh, 10 days, or especially the odd nights of Ramadan. And memor- but even saying this, in the hadith, we learned that we should say this in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, because we don't know when the night of Al-Qadr is exactly, right? So, but we know that it is in one of the last 10 odd nights of Ramadan, and that is when we should be saying this dua abundantly. But this doesn't mean that this dua is only limited to that time because we can say this dua. It's a very beautiful dua and we should be saying it in times other than just Ramadan. But obviously we should be saying it more than usual in these last 10 nights. So Alhamdulillah, we are done this. Does anyone already know this dua? Allahumma inna ka'afu wa ta'fibila fa Does anybody already know it, Memorai? Sister Sarah, Shiza, and Maryam, does anybody want to get on the mic and maybe give it a try? Okay, Maryam, I will unmute you and then Bani and then Sister Sarah. So, Maryam, I am unmuting you now. Um. Allahumma inna ka'afuwan kareemun tuhibbul aqwa ka'afuwani. Okay, that was good, mashallah. Next is Sister Bania. Sister Shiza. Okay. So Sister Shiza, I'm unmuting you and then it's going to be Bania's turn. 
اللهم إنك عفو قريم تحب الله فاعف عني. Okay, Barakallah Fikam, that was very good. Sister Vani, I'm unmuting, unmuting you now. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم إنك عفو قريم تحب العفو فاعف عني. Okay, Barakallah Fikam. <clears throat> Sister, who is next? Sister Sara is next, and then Daniela, inshallah. Sister Sara, I have unmuted you now. <clears throat> okay. Allahumma inna ka'fu wa kareem wa tuhibbu al fa'fu fa'fu anni. Okay, barakallah fikam. تحب العفو فعفو عني okay <clears throat> and last but not least sister Zunira I'm unmuting you now اللهم إنك أفو ونقريم تحب العفو عفو فعفو عني okay بارك الله فيكم جزاك الله خيرا Okay, so just all clear to everyone who participated. We will now be moving on to our next session. Just give me a second to pull up the slides. And inshallah, we'll be moving on to Tafsir and then his class. And then after that, we will be doing our morning and evening asqa. So who remembers what happened yesterday in Tafsir class? You can type it in the chat box, and then if anyone wants to maybe say it on the mic, you can do that as well. Yes, we did ayahs, ayahs 6 to 11 for Surah Al-Duha, and yeah, we finished Surah Al-Duha, yeah. Does anybody remember, okay, what's one lesson you extracted from that Surah? One lesson you got from that Surah that you're going to implement in your life? Difficult times only last for a short time. That is true. Difficult times are temporary, just the way times of ease are temporary. They're both temporary and they both come and go. That's good, Sister Sarah. We have so many blessings we cannot count. That is true. That is very true. And we're not, we're never grateful enough for it. We don't appreciate the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed so many blessings and favors upon us. We don't show enough gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we don't praise him enough. And that's something we should all be doing in our lives. Every single day, we should take out at least a little bit of time to simply just praise Allah, to say Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for us. If anyone calls me bad things or anything, I'm just going to ignore them because Allah is always there for us. Yes, Alhamdulillah, we should not say bad things in return because if someone says bad things to you, then you just say bad things in return. Then who's a better person, really? You're, you both just said the same thing. And we should thank Allah for our blessings. Yes, that is right. Okay, Jazakallah khair, Barakallah fikum. We will now begin Surah Al Alaq, chapter 93. Oh, it's not called the morning hours. I should have changed that. Surah Al Alaq. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. So, first, I will be giving an introduction to this surah. So, the, the first revelation of the Quran. Who knows the first revelation of the Quran? Where are those verses from? It's on the slides now, but. If you knew this from before, you can say that. Which surah was first revealed? Does anybody know the first ayah or the first word that was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Iqra, that is good. That's right, Sister Sarah. Do you know what that means, the word Iqra? Yeah. 
Yes, it means to read. The word Iqra means to read, correct. So the first revelation to the Prophet وسلم, was the first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq. Many people know that it was Surah Al-Alaq, but what they don't know is that it was only the first five verses. The rest of the Surah was revealed at a later time because at the time, Surahs were not revealed altogether. For example, not all of Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed in one day. It wasn't like that. It was different eyes at different times, and then it was put together eventually. For Surah Al-Alaq, the first five verses were revealed the fir- on the first day of revelation. This was the first ever rev- revelation that the Prophet Wasallam received. And it was these first five verses. Sister Sarah knows it in her eyes. Barakallah fikum, Maryam too. So we see that the rest of the surah was revealed when the Prophet Wasallam began openly praying in the haram. The haram is the area of the Kaaba, so it's Masjid al-Haram. So when the Prophet ﷺ began openly praying there, so remember when Islam first began, the Prophet ﷺ would hide the message of Islam because he was scared of all the backlash he would face, all the oppression he would face. So first he would preach in secret. He would preach the message of Islam secretly. And he would, go, he would first talk, talk about Islam to his close family, to his close relatives. And then slowly, slowly it, the message began publicizing and more people began to know about it and then eventually the prophet sallallahu received the command from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to preach the message openly and when so this this is what that refers to after the prophet sallallahu began openly praying at masjid al-haram that is when the rest of surah al was revealed to him the prophet sallallahu we learned that he loved seclusion because he did not want to associate. This is before he was a prophet. He loved seclusion even before that. He did not want to associate with the idol worshippers because he knew in his mind that worshipping idols is haram, that it's not allowed, that there is only one God. But he didn't know, as I mentioned yesterday, he didn't know all about Islam because Islam didn't exist. So he would still, he would go, reg, he would regularly go to Cape Hera to ponder, to think, to be secluded and be alone because he wanted his own alone time and not be associated with the people of mecca who at the time would worship idols only and then one day on a monday during the last 10 odd nights of the month of ramadan angel jibreel came to the prophet and commanded him to read and the first word that was said was iqra which sister sarah mentioned earlier that the word iqra means to read so the Prophet وسلم, we know from the from hadith that the Prophet وسلم, was unlettered or that he was illiterate. And that means that he did not know how to read or write because at the time there wasn't much education the way there is today. There was no formal school or education where everybody would go to school and learn their ABCs. It wasn't like that at the time. So the Prophet وسلم, did not have the knowledge of how to read or how to write. So he was illiterate. And if Angel Jibreel told the Prophet to read. He said, Iqra. But the Prophet replied and said that, I can't read. I don't know how to read. And this thing occurred three times. So when the Prophet said that he doesn't know how to read, Angel Jibreel squeezed the Prophet so tight until he lost all of his energy. And then this occurred three different three times. So he lost all of his energy. Then Angel Jibreel said again, Iqra, read. The Prophet again said, I don't know how to read. I can't read. And then Angel Jibreel squeezed the Prophet again until he lost all of his energy. And then the third time, instead of just saying Iqra, Angel Jibreel said, Iqra, bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. That is the first verse of Surah al and that is the first verse, the first ayah that was revealed to the Prophet as wahi which is revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, so we will now move on to the surah itself. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Recite in the name of your Lord who created. Created what? You can ask created what? Because the sentence ends at created. So created what? There's no specific object that's mentioned and that's how we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. Recite it in the name of your Lord who created everything you could put any object in front of that yes as your said everything exactly so the first verse the first word is iqra and that means to recite or to read the word iqra comes from the arabic word qira'a and that means it has two different meanings it can either mean to read what is written 
So if you write something on a piece of paper and then somebody reads it off the piece of paper. The second, the second meaning is to recite from memory. So the Prophet Sallallahu understood from what Angel Jibreel, Angel Jibreel was telling him to read what is written. And the Prophet did not know how to read what is written. But what Jibreel actually meant was to recite from memory, was to read from memory. And, the Prophet, and anyone can recite from memory. Alhamdulillah, if you memorize something, you don't have to know how to read or write to recite from memory. So this is what the angel Jibreel meant, to recite from memory. And then after the word iqra, it follows with bismika. Bismika. And this means in the name of your Lord. So normally when we read or write, we recite from paper. We read from paper. Paper is, our, is one of our greatest sources of knowledge. We use paper to write our information, to memorize information. And we usually read, whenever we read something, it's usually from paper, from a screen or something along, along those materials. But over here, we see that in the name of your Lord, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is being told to recite from memory and to recite directly from your Lord, from what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying, from what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has revealed upon the Prophet Sallallahu And this is unique to the Prophet and unique to different messengers only. We don't see normally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending down revelation to us. Us as normal humans, as average humans, we don't receive revelation. This is unique only to the messengers who did, reveal, who did receive revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know that the, the revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the final revelation to ever occur on earth. And that there would be no more revelation after that. So anybody who claims that they are receiving revelation is automatically a liar. Mr. Sara is saying, if these first ayahs were the first ayahs revealed, why isn't it the first surah in the Quran? The first surah in the Quran, Surah Al Fatiha, we see that the Quran, right, we have right now, the Mus'haf, is not in chronological order. So that just means that it's not in the order that it was revealed in, but it was compiled by the Sahabas in an order that they thought was best, and this is the way it was supposed to be. Alhamdulillah. Just because this was the first verse revealed doesn't mean it has to be in the in the first surah because the Quran is not in order from what was revealed first to what was revealed last. It's not in that order. Does that make any sense? Okay. So the letter Ba we see over here. So we see Iqra Bismi. So Ba in Bismi. This letter indicates that the Prophet because Bismi can mean with. That's its general meaning, the word with. But over here, Ba indicates that the Prophet وسلم, should recite with Allah's special favor and blessings upon him. Or it could also mean that the Prophet وسلم, should recite due to communication with Allah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inspire him. So that's two different meanings. And these are both very beautiful meanings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special favor and blessings are upon the Prophet وسلم, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is communicating with the Prophet and inspiring the Prophet through revelation, through divine revelation. We don't, this isn't something normal. This is something, this is a very unique situation that doesn't occur anymore. So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's special favor and blessings were upon the Prophet وسلم, after that, we see that it says, recite in the name of your Lord, الَّذِي خلق, who created. الَّذِي means the one who, and khalaq means the one who creates. So he created. So we see over here that الَّذِي خلق, who is your Lord? He is the one who created. And what did he create? He created everything. Because there's no specific object mentioned, we understand from this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created every single thing. And you could put any object over here and it, the sentence would be completely true. Moving on to the second verse, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Khalaqal insana min alaq created man from a clinging substance. Khalaqa he created. So now in the first verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended with khalaq, the one who created. And now the second verse begins with khalaq, he created. Now what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create? What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically talking about in this verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Allah now is talking about human beings as his creation. He created humans. He created human beings. Yes, he created humans as his creation. So the word alaq means a small quantity of blood that clings inside the womb. And this could also refer to a blood clot. And when there is a blood clot, that indicates that the, that the object or the being is living, that it's a living being. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created man from a clinging substance. He's the one who created humankind from a clinging substance. And how small is a blood clot? How small is a clinging substance? A blood clot is very, very small. It's like almost a drop of blood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us from that, from something so small, so small. And now you're, uh, alhamdulillah, a healthy, per, per, a healthy, working, functioning human being that has hands, eyes, feet, a body that works, alhamdulillah. But we all started from something so, so small. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created man from a clinging substance. And because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created humankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the one who guides us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the one who gives us guidance, who inspires us to be guided. And we receive guidance through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because he is the one who created us, Allah is also the only one who deserves to tell us what to do and what not to do. If you create a robot, for example, you would be in charge of controlling what it does and what it does not, what it doesn't do. You, you would be the one in charge of seeing this robot is allowed to do this. This robot can do this. This robot cannot do that. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who would deserve, who deserves to tell us what we can do, that we're, what we're supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do. We see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns us. So when you own something, when you own a certain object, you have control over it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala owns us. So he should have, and he does have control over us and what we are supposed to do and what we're not supposed to do. Moving on to the third verse. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. Recite, and your Lord is the most generous. So we see Iqra is mentioned again. So the angel Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Iqra again. Now he's, but he's now, the, it doesn't just end at Iqra. He's saying, Iqra wa rabbu kal akram. Recite in the name, recite and your Lord is the most generous. Akram over here means the most generous, the most honorable, and the most noble. So we already learned from this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most giving, the most generous, the most honorable. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many things, so many blessings, so many flavors. So many favors. We talked about this yesterday, Alhamdulillah, that we don't appreciate it enough, and it's very true that we don't. We're not. We're not grateful enough to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala for His generosity towards us. But over here, let's see what generosity Allah, what generosity means, or in this context. So over here, we see that Angel Jibreel Alayhi Salam is telling the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to read, and your Lord is the most generous. Why is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala the most generous in this situation? Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's generosity. Refer, is referring to the miracle of the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowing favors upon the Prophet وسلم, through the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sending down revelation to the Prophet to guide the Prophet and to guide his ummah, which is the best ummah, alhamdulillah, to guide the believers, to guide the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us his generosity by giving us something that could guide us. If you create something and you don't have, for example, if you create a robot, going back to my previous example, if you create a robot, but you don't, you don't have an instruction manual with it, you did not create an instruction manual, and then you go sell that robot to somebody, but there's no instruction manual at all, they're not going to understand how to use the robot. They won't know what to do with it or how to use it. Similarly, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send down the Quran, we would have no idea what to do with our lives, how to live our lives. We would have no guide on what to do, on what's right, on what's wrong, and we would be lost. We would be a very lost generation. But Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran as a guide for us, as a means of guidance. And we should take advantage of that. Take advantage of the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so generous that he sent down the Quran. Be grateful for it and then take advantage of the knowledge that you can learn from the Quran. Allah did not just create humans and leave them to be misguided and to figure everything out for themselves without a guide. We just talked about that. Rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent guidance for our own benefit. <clears throat> Allah doesn't owe us anything. If, if Allah could easily have chosen to not give us guidance, to have not sent down the Quran, and we could easily have been, Allah could easily have chosen for us to be a lost generation, a, a lost generation, and for us to have figured everything out from ourselves. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala could easily not give us guidance, and then we would be a very misguided nation. We wouldn't have knowledge of what of the knowledge that we learned from the Quran. We wouldn't have any of that knowledge. We wouldn't even know who Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is. But, <clears throat> excuse me, but we see that 
because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most generous, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about us, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide us, Allah has sent down the Quran as a means for our guidance, as a means, it's a life guide. It's it, Essentially, the Quran is a life guide. It's a guide on how to live your life, on how to earn Jannah, inshallah, on how to make the best of this world and the best of the next world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent all this for our own benefit because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cares about us and wants us to succeed. And now it's just a matter of who, which one of us actually take advantage of that and which one of us actually use this resource Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided to us. Many times we see in this world that at school, for example, there's many different resources. There's, you probably have maybe you probably have an extra class or extra office hours or your teachers have said, come to me after school if you have questions. These are all extra resources that many people don't use, that many people don't take advantage of. They don't go to off office hours. They don't go to teachers after class to ask them questions. So you're not taking advantage of the opportunities you have around you. But similarly over here, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down the Quran and many people don't take advantage of this. Many people don't go out of their way to learn what the Quran is saying, to learn the meaning of the Quran. And this is a loss for them. It's a huge loss for them. Guidance is a huge blessing and favor upon us from Allah. Who we should be grateful and thankful for the blessing of the Quran. And we should thank Allah for his generosity and mercy. Moving on to verse number four. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alladhi allama bil qalam. Who taught by the pen? Who, who does alladhi refer to over here? Alladhi means who. But who does this refer to? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who taught humankind every single thing. Think about it. When you come out of the womb, when you're born, you're born one second ago do you know anything you don't know your own name you don't know anything you don't know what you don't know who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you don't know what's in front of you you don't know what the sky is what the sun is you have no knowledge of anything but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us so much think of all the knowledge you have learned from the day you were born till today till right now till this very moment you have learned so much and alhamdulillah this is a blessing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are able to learn knowledge because many people don't many people don't have functioning brains many people don't have for example many people are deaf many people are blind they can't learn knowledge as easily as other people do but alhamdulillah even them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes ways for them to learn knowledge as well so we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has taught humankind everything we also see that ilm which means knowledge ilm is mentioned in the first revelation in the first revelation, the first five verses, ilm is mentioned. And this shows us how important seeking and gaining knowledge is. Many times we say school is useless. This is useless. That is useless. I don't need to learn this. I'm never going to use this. But we see the importance of seeking and gaining knowledge. Gaining uh, this knowledge refers to beneficial knowledge only. You can't, gain, you can't gain negative knowledge and say, oh, I'm gaining knowledge. So it's a good thing. No, you need to gain beneficial knowledge. Knowledge that will impact your life in a good and beneficial way. Knowledge that you can use to better yourself as an individual. Using this knowledge and learning and seeking this knowledge is what's going to be beneficial for you in this life and in the Akhirah, inshallah. So our ilm, we see the importance of ilm over here. We also learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught by the pen and that we know that the pen is a tool of learning. And it's a means to preserve knowledge because we write down and then we learn from that. We see that the pen is now a very common tool. Every, everyone uses a pen. But now we are eventually moving on to technology and typing and whatnot. But we see that the pen is still a very common tool and it is used every single day by many, many individuals around the world. Last ayah for today, the fifth ayah, which is the, the last verse of the first revelation that was revealed. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. insana ma lam ya'lam. Taught man that which he knew not. Who taught? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught. And what did he teach? He taught us everything. He taught us everything we didn't know. We didn't know anything when we were born. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us all this knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught the human being about matters that he or she, that me, that me and you, we were all completely ignorant of. We had no knowledge of any of this. When we come out of the womb of our mothers, we know absolutely nothing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it for us made us our hearing, gave, gave us ears, eyes, vision, a brain so that we can learn, store knowledge, and become people of knowledge, inshallah. People that use our knowledge beneficially, people that implement this knowledge in, our, in their own lives, inshallah. 
Revelation is the greatest means of knowledge. We know this because the Quran, the Quran is a great source of knowledge. It's a guide for us. It's our life guide. It's the book we should refer to at all times. It is the greatest means of knowledge in this world. So Alhamdulillah, that concludes our tafsir session. Does anybody have any thoughts? Anything you want to share? Anything you learned today? What's one lesson you got from today's lesson from today's session? Or anything that stood out to you or anything that you plan on using in your everyday life now and implementing it in your actions. We would not know what to do if Allah Yeah, so we would not know what to do if Allah had not sent down the Quran. Very good. We would not know what to do. We would, yes, the Quran is a life guide. We wouldn't know what to do if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send down the Quran. Because if, imagine, imagine this world right now without the Quran. No, there would be no such thing as Muslim because nobody would know what true, well, nobody, know what, nobody would know what Islam is. Nobody would know what, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Nobody would know what's right. Nobody would know what's wrong. We wouldn't know how to get to Jannah. We wouldn't know how to save ourselves from Jahannam. There would be nothing without the Quran. Yes, this life would be useless without the Quran because we wouldn't know how to succeed. We wouldn't know how to succeed and to make the best of this world and the best of the Akhirah. Always thank Allah for the blessings we have. That is very true. We should always be grateful and show gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Always Allah thought, taught us everything since the first day till we are born now. That is very true. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us everything and we should be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. We should also be grateful to Allah that he has given us these abilities to learn, that he has given us a brain, eyes, ears, and all these means we use to learn, to store knowledge and to gain knowledge. We have had so we can write and learn. That is very correct. And we also learn that the pen is a very important tool. Alhamdulillah. This was, I hope this was a very beneficial session for you guys. We will now move on to our his session. Okay. So today we will be memorizing verses 1 to 5 of Surah Al-Ala. So I will be reciting and you can repeat after me. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq Khalaq al-insana min alaq Iqra' wa rabbuka al-akram Alladhi allama bil-qalam علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. We will review this one more time. So بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق. خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم 
Also, remember to keep in mind the meaning while you recite. So we see, اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقُ Recite in the name of your Lord who created. خَلَقَ الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ عَلَقُ Created man from a clinging substance. اِقْرَأْ وَرَبُّكَ الْأَكْرَمْ Recite, and your Lord is the most generous. الَّذِي عَلَّمَ بِالْقَلَمْ Who taught by the pen. عَلَّمَ الْإِنسَانَ مَا لَمْ يَعْلُمْ Taught man that which he knew not. Now that you also know the background of this of these few verses, you know on the context in which they were revealed, you know the interpretation of this by the Sahabas and scholars, you also know the meaning. So keep in mind all this while you recite these five verses and try to memorize them. For those of you who already know it memorized, make sure you try to remember the meaning whenever you do recite them because it's... If you just read a bunch of Arabic words that you don't know the meaning of, there's no point to reading it. Technically, you could just read a bunch of Chinese words, just read anything, but you wouldn't. If you don't know the meaning, you're not learning anything from it. There's nothing that's going into your brain, nothing that you could use in your life. So knowing the meaning, understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you, to us, to the believers, to Muslims, to all of us, is very important. We learned that the Quran is a life guide. How are you going to use the life guide if it's in a different language, if you don't understand the language? If you get an instruction manual of a robot in a different language, for example, if it was in German, I'm sure many of us don't know German. How would you use that? You wouldn't be able to use it. You wouldn't be able to function the robot. Similarly, if we don't understand Arabic, or at least we don't even go out of our way to see the English translation, we wouldn't even be able to use our life in a way that would help us in the akhirah, and we won't make the best of our of our life in this world. So make sure you memorize these five verses for Tuesday. Tomorrow I will be uploading a quiz and sending you the link, and this quiz will contain the content we learned from Tuesday, Wednesday, and today, which is Thursday. <clears throat> And you will have till Monday night to complete the quiz. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then Tuesday will be our next class after today. We will now move on to... What did I send? Did I send the link? I'll send it tomorrow, inshallah. The quiz will be up by tomorrow. The homework. Um, so... The homework, you're just going to be tested on it. So basic, th so basic lessons from Tafsir class and the, some lessons from the Names of Allah class. And um, yeah, so those two will be on the test and even maybe a little bit from the Dua session. And maybe later during the end of the course, I will be testing you on your hips and that will be through a voice call, inshallah. Because I can't test you for his through an online quiz. That's not going to work. Okay, does anybody else have any questions before we move on to our last session? Which is morning and evening is God. Where will we find the quiz? I will send you the link through email, inshallah. And it will be on a Google Forms. Okay, is that clear? Okay, so we will move on to our last session of the day. Will you email us the slides? Yes, today I will email you all three slides. <clears throat> the slides from Tuesday, Wednesday, and today. For all the sessions, inshallah. And remember the first day of class when we did the sunnah of the day for dua before sleeping and dua after sleeping? We won't be doing, that won't be on the test, so don't worry about that. So I won't be sending that document to you because that won't be on the test. And we've changed that session to morning and evening as far now. So you don't have to worry about that, inshallah. Okay. So today we will be looking at two duas, maybe a third one if we have enough time. But the first one we will be looking at today is one that we, we recite in the morning. All this class and this class ends at five o'clock. And you know this dua, barakalafikum. You can say it after a bit, after a few minutes. Once I will give the reference from where this dua is from, I will also recite the dua and say the meaning. And then you could say, I'll get people to say it on the mic, inshallah. So this dua, we see it is in a hadith, in a sahih hadith in Jamia al Tirmidhi. So Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu narrated that the Prophet used to teach his companions to say in the morning, 
O oh Allah, by your leave we reach the morning, and by your leave we reach the evening. And by your leave we live, and by your leave we will die, and to you is our return. And in the evening, he would tell the companions to say, O oh Allah, by your leave we reach the evening, and by your leave we reach the morning, and by your leave we reach, by your leave we live, and by your leave we will die, and to you is our resurrection. So we see this dua and the next slide are very, very similar duas. The thing is, they are just used in two different situations. One is for the morning, one is for the evening. So the fir first, you will cover the one we recite in the morning. So first, I will recite it, and then after, you will repeat after me. Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namutu, wa ilayka al-masir. O oh Allah, by your leave we reach the morning, and by your leave we reach the evening, and by your leave we live, and by your leave we will die, and to you is our return. What does this mean? This just means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of everything, and everything happens according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. So by Allah's will, we will live till tomorrow morning. By Allah's will, we will live till the evening. By Allah's, live, by Allah's will, we die whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to die, and we all return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now you will repeat after me, inshallah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma bika asfahna. Wabika amsayna. Wabika nahya. Wabika namutu. Wa ilayka al masir. Allahumma bika asfahna. وبك أمسينا وبك نحيا وبك نموت وإليك المصير Okay, so who wants to volunteer to say this on the mic? You can look at it and read it, and if you already know it, you can read it as well. Okay, so first, Sister Shiza, then Sarah, then... Sadia's iPad, are you Ifra? Okay, so Shiza, then Ifra, and then Maria. Uh, so, sh sorry, Shiza, Ifra, Sunaira, then Maria. So first, Sister Shiza, I will unmute you. Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namutu, wa ilayka al-masir. Okay, barakallahu feekum. That was very good. Next up, I will unmute Sister Sarah. So you are now unmuted. Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna, wa bika nahya. Barakallah feekum. That was very good, mashallah. Next, I will unmute Ifra. Okay, Ifra, you are now unmuted. Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namutu, wa ilayka al-masih. Okay, Barakallah Fikum, that is very good. I will now unmute Sunira. One second. Okay, Sunira, you are now unmuted. Okay, Barakallah Fikum, that was very good. And last but not least, Mariam, I will unmute you. Allahumma bika asbahna, wa bika amsayna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namuku, wa ilayka al-masir. Okay, Barakallah Fikum, that was very good. Uh, mashallah, everybody did very good, Barakallah Fik. We will now move on to our next dua, which is the one we recite in the evening. And if you know, if you memorize the first one, this one won't be difficult because they are very, very similar. The only difference is that in the first dua, we say, Allahumma bika asbahna wa bika amsayna. But in this one, the one we recite in the evening, we say, Allahumma bika amsayna wa bika asbahna. 
So in the evening, we mention the evening first, and in the morning, we mention the morning first. That is the only difference. The rest of the dua is the same except for the last word, which is for the morning one, it is masir, and in the evening dua, it is nushur. So it's just a little bit of change in words, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, Barakalafi, you guys have memorized this dua. I see that. So I will quickly read. I will quickly read the dua and the translation, and then I will get people to say it on the mic. So repeat after me. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma bika amsayna. Wa bika asbahna. Wa bika nahya. Wa bika namutu wa ilayka nushur. Allahumma bika amsayna. Wa bika asbahna. Wa bika nahya. Wa bika namutu wa ilayka nushur. Okay, so I will now get people to say it on the mic. Sister Vanya, I will get you to say it first, then Shiza, then Zanira, and then we will see. So Sister Vanya, I'm unmuting you first. Bismillah. Oh, Vanya just left the classroom. She, maybe she's having technical difficulties. Okay, we'll move on to the next person. And that is Sister Shiza, so I am unmuting you now. Sister Shiza is unmuted. Allahumma bika amsayna, wa bika asbahna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namutu, wa ilayka nushur. Okay, barakallahu feekum. That was very good. Sister <coughs> Zonera is up next. So Zanira, I am unmuting you. Allahumma bika amsayna, wa bika asbahna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namudu, wa ilayka nushur. Barakallah fikum, that was very good. Mashallah, so barakallah fik. Next up, we have... Sister Sara, then Ifra, Sara, then Ifra, then Mariam. Okay. So I'm getting Sara to unmute your mic now. Allahumma bika amsayna, wa bika asbahna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namutu wa ilayka nushuru. Barakallahu feekum. That was very good, mashallah. Sister Ifra, you are now unmuted. Allahumma bika amsayna, wa bika asbahna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namudu wa ilayka al-nushur. Barakallahu feekum. That was very good, mashallah. You are all doing very, very good. Mariam, you're the last person, unless somebody else volunteers in the chat. But for now, Mariam, you are unmuted. Allahumma bika amsayna, wa bika asbahna, wa bika nahya, wa bika namudu, wa ilayka nushur. Barakallah fikum. That was very, very good. You all did very good, mashallah. And I really appreciate that you are all you are all volunteering in the chat to speak up on the mic and recite these duas. I really like that. Barakallah fikum. If nobody else wants to volunteer, we will all just quickly discuss a lesson, one lesson that we took from today's class. And that can be from any session, tafsir, his, dua, names of Allah, anything. One lesson that you learned from today's class that that means maybe means a lot to you, that's close to you, that you're going to implement in your life, something that stood out to you. You can type it in the chat box. And you will quickly see what everybody learned, one lesson, and we will share these lessons so that other people can benefit from it as well. So Sister Zanira is saying that we only know things because of Allah, and that is very true. Barakallah fikum. We only know things because of Allah, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not allow us to understand 
and he did not give us the abilities to understand for example if we did not have a brain or eyes to see and no ears to listen from we didn't have anything we wouldn't be able to learn so it's because of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of his mercy because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all these favors these blessings the blessing of living the blessing of gaining knowledge the blessing of finding knowledge seeking knowledge all of this is a huge favor from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's something that we should all be grateful about that is true sister shiza is saying that surah al-iqra or surah al-alaq is the first surah revealed to the prophet وسلم, that is correct the first five verses from surah al-alaq is the first revelation ever to the prophet so that is how Islam, Islam began as a religion. Because we know Islam began when revelation began. So when this, because this was the first revelation, this is exactly when the message of Islam began and when the Prophet ﷺ became a prophet. Before these verses, before this revelation, Muhammad ﷺ was just a man. He was not a prophet. But after this, after receiving this revelation, he received prophethood. Alhamdulillah. Sister Zanira is saying we have to thank Allah for sending the Quran because then we would have nothing to do. Exactly. We should thank Allah for sending us the Quran, sending us a guide because without, without the Quran, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have anything to do. We would have no rules. We wouldn't have a way to live. We wouldn't know how to get to Jannah. And that, is, that should be everyone's ultimate goal, inshallah. Sister Sara is saying never feel like you don't have something because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you so many things. And that is so, so true. Yesterday, in Surah Al-Duha, while we were ending, we learned that Surah Al-Duha was a surah that was a remedy for sadness for the Prophet And we see one of the ways to end sadness is to focus on the good, focus on the bright side, to focus on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, to show gratitude, to be grateful to Allah, to be thankful to Allah. And we shouldn't feel like we don't have anything because yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many things. We have a body, we have a working, functioning body that we don't have to do, we don't have to work so much for it. We don't have to pump our own heart. We don't have to control our heartbeat. We don't have to remember to breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. That's not, that, that, all that stuff happens automatically, alhamdulillah. So Sir Ifra is saying Allah gave us a brain so we can gain knowledge. That is correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a brain and we should use this to our advantage and Gain as much beneficial knowledge as we can, inshallah. Fariha is saying that Allah made us from just a drop of blood. That is correct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us from something so small, from a clinging substance. That was the word. The, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made man from a clinging substance, from a clot. That's it. From something so, so small. And now you're barakallah a healthy individual that has hands and eyes and feet and that can walk, talk and do all this. But remember where we all came from we all came from nothing we all came from absolutely nothing from something so so small and this is why we should thank allah so, so much because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has helped us all grow has given us the ability to grow because many people don't grow but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us all the ability to grow as an individual many of us are still becoming taller all all of us are becoming taller and becoming bigger out as our, as we age every single day alhamdulillah Sister Zanira is saying that the Prophet could not read, but he read the first time of Surah Al-Ikhra. Yes, and this means that the Prophet ﷺ could not read from paper. He could not read. If something was written on paper, the Prophet ﷺ could not read because he didn't know how to read. But what was meant to be here was that the Prophet ﷺ recited. He still read, but he didn't read from paper. He read from memorization, from what Angel Jibreel ﷺ said to him. That's what he read. Yes, he read the first ayah of Surah Al-Ikhra. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's five o'clock. Are we supposed to leave? Yes, class is ending right now. So, Jazakallah Khair for everyone for sharing the lessons you learned. Jazakallah Khair for attending. I hope this was a beneficial class for you. Jazakallah Khair. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.